and who was the head of the army senapati i system now the mauryans they also had a very efficient spy system in order to have the entire information and happenings in the kingdom they established a very efficient spy system even the women they were also appointed in the spy system or, or as the spies the next is taxation now children what was the main source of income land revenue how much was the land revenue usually 1/4 or 1/6 of the produce now let us see which were the other sources other than the land revenue they were tax on forest mines customs trade crafts and water okay now the money which was generated from taxation etc it was used in paying the salaries to the soldiers etc and other workers who worked in the empire to maintain an army and also for the welfare of the society next we come to trade trade it was very uh, good or highly developed both inland trade within the empire and even with the foreign countries now in those days india it was having relations with many foreign countries like sri lanka egypt and greece Now let us see which were the important centers of trading. They were Patliputra, Takshashila, and Ujjaini. Now let us study about the society. Now children, Megasthenes, according to Megasthenes, who was one of the ambassadors of uh, Seleucus, sent by Seleucus, he describes that Patliputra, which was also the capital of the Mauryan Empire, was a very very beautiful city. king he lived in a very very big palace which was made up of stone caste system was present in those days okay now according to arthashastra it also mentions that even slavery also existed in those days okay was practiced in those days but the slaves they were looked after very well now what was the main occupation of the people it was agriculture and the irrigation facilities they were provided by the state the farmers they were encouraged to bring more land under cultivation other than agriculture which was the other occupations practice they were mining carpentry forestry masonry and pottery okay masonry means the art of building houses with the help of bricks and stone now we move to the next topic that is the mauryan art now children mauryan art it was very very highly developed during the ashoka's rule now the mauryans they built many stupas and pillars among the stupas the the stupa at sanchi that is very very popular now the pillars they were beautifully polished and it shone like mirrors okay now ashoka's edicts they were uh inscribed on rocks and pillars okay they were written on rocks and pillars now children what is a stupa a stupa it is a dome like structure which is made out of stone or brick and it is mainly made in order to respect a sacred spot or to preserve or save the relics of buddha relics what are they children they are the parts or the belongings of a deceased holy person's body or belong or his belongings okay now among this as earlier also i have mentioned that the sanchi stupa which is built by ashoka is very very popular the most popular pillar is the sarnath pillar at the dia now children the lion capital of sarnath pillar it is made up of stone now the lion capital at present it is in sarnath museum which is in the state of uttar pradesh now children on the upper portion of the capital we can see the figures of 
four lions which are standing back to back. Modern India has adopted the lion capital of Sarnath as the national emblem of India. Now let us study about the decline of the Mauryan Empire. Now children, the Mauryan Empire, it lasted for more than 100 years. And after Ashoka's death, slowly it started breaking up okay, or declining. Now, let us see what were the reasons for the breakup of the Mauryan Empire. Now, children, after Ashoka's death, the rulers or his successors, they were weak and they were not able to control the empire. So, this was one reason why the empire started declining. Now, in order, because the empire was very, very vast, so for men, uh, protecting the vast empires, the rulers, they required a very large army. But you see his successors, Ashoka's successors, they could not collect enough taxes to meet the growing expenses in order to maintain the army. So, then let us move to the third one, the enormous or the huge expenditure on the army and the bureaucracy, it led to a final crisis. Now, during Ashoka's rule, the army fell out of practice and became inefficient and weak because he adopted Buddhism. And now he also... Uh, announced that he won't fight any other wars. So the army also had, did not have enough practice and all and so it became inefficient and weak. Then Ashoka's attitude of anti-ritual and anti-sacrifice attitude also reduced the incomes of the Brahmanas. And so what happened? They, like the Brahmanical reaction, it also became, began as a result of Ashoka's policies. Okay, so the Brahmins, they became against Ashoka. Now, <clears throat> other than this, the oppressive rule in the provinces, it was also one of the reasons for the breakup of the empire. So slowly what happened, the various provinces of the Mauryan Empire, they started splitting away or breaking away and they established themselves as independent kingdom. And thus Magadha also became weak and it became very easy for the foreign invaders to have victory over Magadha. Underline the date children in 185 BC. Okay. So, in the end, in 185 BC, the last Mauryan king, whose name was Brihadratha, was killed by his own commander-in-chief, whose name was Pushpa Mitra Sangha. And he became the ruler now, and then he started a new dynasty, which was known as the Sangha dynasty in Magadha. Interesting tale or a story about the Mauryan Empire or Chanakya. Now you see, children, Chanakya, he was an advisor to Chandragupta Maurya. Now once what happened, Chandragupta Maurya, he faced a defeat or he became defeated in the battle and he became very sad. And then Chandragupta Maurya came to meet Chanakya in order to seek his advice. But what happened when Chandragupta reached Chanakya. Chanakya told him to eat some food. Then he said that after having the food, we will have an discussion. Now Chandragupta, as he was very upset because of the defeat, he refused to eat as he was not happy. But Chanakya, he insisted that you should eat something and after that we will have the discussion. So Chandragupta agreed and he sat down for the dinner. And Chanakya said to him, uh, to have the dinner fast so that they could have a discussion over the defeat. Now, Chanakya said that I have a wonderful plan. First, let us finish the food and then we will discuss about the plan. But what happened, the rice which was served in the plate, they were very, very hot. And Chandragupta, he found very difficult to eat it since it was very hot. Now Chanakya, he was observing all this 
एंड वॉट डिड ही से टू चंद्रगुप्ता ही सेड हेम टू ईट द राइस फ्रॉम द कॉर्नर इंस्टेड ऑफ स्टार्टिंग ईटिंग फ्रॉम द सेंटर and after finishing the day, uh, dinner chandragupta asked chanakya about the plan so that he could again have a victory chanakya replied that i have already taught you a lesson while having the dinner now what was the lesson children it was a lesson that in order to attack an enemy first you should see his weak points instead of engaging him in his strongholds so just like it is easy to pick the hot rice from the corner of a plate than from the center so in this way he taught a lesson to chanakya he taught a lesson to chandragupta while eating the food or the dinner so children with this we come to the end of the chapter thank you